this example, we want to use a double integral to find the volume in the first octet bounded by z equals 4 minus y squared, y equals x, and y equals 0. If we look at sketching this surface here, z equals 4 minus y squared, this is a cylindrical surface, and we first looked at those in chapter 11. If you want to do the um, y z trace, think of this as the y axis and the z axis, and this is our z equals 4 minus y squared, and this is going to be a parabola that opens down. If you go up four units and go to the right two and left two, you'll see that it is a parabola that opens down. And since x, can, x is not included in this equation, x could be anything, and that creates the cylindrical surface in three dimensions. So in three dimensions, this is going to look like this on the z-axis, moving up four units on the y-axis, two units, and we have a parabola that opens down, and we are looking in the first octant. The first octant is where x, y, and z is positive. So if we are sketching in this manner, then it's kind of the, the part that's closest to you, drawing to perspective. So here is a portion of the surface, and since x could be anything, we can draw a parallel surface. It is a cylindrical surface. So this is a portion of the surface that is given by z equals 4 minus y squared. Now the equation y equals x. Well, this doesn't have a z in it, so this represents a plane. We have this surface in the first octant, and um, the plane y equals x and if you sketch that in two dimensions, here's x and y, y equals x is the, just that diagonal line. So we have this diagonal line that goes through uh, in the xy plane, and the z can be anything. So it's like we're going to be, it's this vertical portion of the plane that's going to be slicing that. And then, um, y equals 0, y equals 0 would be the the x, z plane. Actually, that should be x equals 0. My mistake. So that x equals 0 is going to be the y, z plane. Now, it may not be that easy to see, but there is a region that is bounded by those in the first octant. So this is our solid region in yellow, and we do need to determine a base region. That base region is the, the portion that is on the xy plane, and then the z part here is the height of the solid. I'm going to just clean up a little bit around, around this, and we want to determine what that base region is. If we graph that in two dimensions, again, this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, and our z-axis. So if you sketch the base region in the xy plane, it is that equation um, y equals x. And then right here, where it crosses over here at positive 2, Y, on the y-axis, it goes through two. You see that line there. This region here is the region that corresponds to the green region in the 3D drawing. So this is our two-dimensional drawing of the base region R. And this is our three-dimensional drawing of the actual solid that's bounded by those equations. To the formula that we use for volume is a double integral where r is the base region of a function of x and y 
DA, differential area. So that R is defined by that, that base region, and our differential area is going to be dy dx. So when we plug in what the height of the function is, that's our f of x, y, that's your z. And z is equal to this function, so it's going to be 4 minus y squared times the differential area. Now, the differential area can be either dy dx or dx dy. If we draw a vertical rectangle in that region, then that differential area, dA, is going to be the height, which is our dy, times the width, which is your little change in x. So the order we can use is dy dx. Now we need to determine the bounds of integration. And by looking over here at the, the base region, the two-dimensional drawing, our bounds for y is going to be a lower y equals. The bottom of this rectangle is the line y equals x. The top part of that, or the upper portion of that rectangle is the line y equals 2. So that's going to be your lower bound and your upper bound. And then for your bounds for x, the left x is equal to what you get when you slide that rectangle all the way to the left. That left x is equal to 0. And then if you slide that rectangle all the way to the right here, that right x is equal to 2. So that's going to be our upper bound, uh, lower and upper bounds for x. Now we can evaluate this iterated integral, this double integral, to find the volume of this region. Doing the inside first. The inside, the differential is dy, so you're going to integrate with respect to y. The antiderivative of 4 is 4y. The antiderivative of y squared, that's y cubed over 3. And we evaluate the bounds from y equals x to y equals 2, and then dx. When we plug in the upper bound, y equals 2, this is going to be 8 minus uh, 8 thirds, and 8 minus 8 thirds is um, 16 thirds. Minus what you get when you plug in the lower bound. When you plug in the lower bound, y equals x. You get 4x minus this x to the third over 3, all of that dx. Now this is a single definite integral and it doesn't require any advanced integration techniques. Integrate each part and then evaluate the upper and lower bound. When you do that, your answer, your final answer should be 4. So the volume of that region is 4 cubic units.